we've decided on in-person brigades this year. And um, because of this, here's a couple of the things that we will be discussing about what that is gonna look like for us. Um, yeah. Okay, let's talk medical brigade. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go over what it's actually gonna look like in person this year. It's a little different with COVID than what we've done in the past. Um, so the general layout of the clinic for uh, community members is the exact same as the past, but the stations that we can participate in as volunteers is different. Um, consult vision gynecology for um, students that identify as female, um, Charla pharmacy and then DI is what we can participate in. Um, intake and triage this year is going to be done by their community members or the community health entrepreneurs exclusively. So um, that's a little different this year. Um, and I'm just going to talk about each of the stations um, briefly and then talk about what the detailed itinerary for a trip would look like. So intake is the first station of the clinic. This is where um, community volunteers will collect information about uh, like name, age, what community people come from, um, and just get all of that in the GB electronic system. Um, and yeah, that's usually, we've um, done that in the past, but that will be community volunteers this time. Uh, triage, again, we've done this one in the past as well, um, but it's just gonna be the community health entrepreneurs taking vitals, asking about chief complaints, um, allergies, medications, that kind of thing. Um, and then after triage, um, the patient's gonna move on to a consult, which is where we come in. Um, this is where we get to shadow doctors in their um, conversations with patients. Um, in my experience, um, the doctors have been really great with um, like teaching us and questioning us, um, testing us. Um, even uh, on my uh, brigade experience, I got to do like blood pressure and helping them with tests and stuff in the console station. And this was personally my favorite station. And I think, I mean, a lot of returning members would probably say the same. Um, so we get to do that one this year. And then, yeah, for uh, students that identify as female, we can do gynecology. Um, this is um, for um, patients that come into the clinic that um, would like to get a pap smear done, then they can do that at the gynecology clinic. Um, and yeah, one to two uh, female volunteers at, the, at once can be in that station. And then vision, this one is very inspirational, I think. Um, that picture there was taken on our last in-person brigade. Um, and it's really cool to see someone's face light up because they can finally see now. Um, and Ali's done a really great job collecting glasses donations. So they will- More than enough yeah. now that you've had that chat with Catherine. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's great because a lot of like everything that we give out at um, the optometry station is the stuff that we collect. So the more that we have, you know, the more options we have to hopefully get the right fit for um, each person's um, unique prescription. Um, yeah, the optometrist that we've worked with in the past in Honduras is great. Um, he's really fun. He's really good at teaching us. Um, this is a really, really great station and you definitely learn a lot as well. And it's very um, rewarding. This year, it's going to be an adult charla instead of um, children's charla. So this is where we're going to educate the adults in the community about topics like COVID-19, chronic illness, or mental health, which are all things that I think is important for us to help convey the importance of because mental health specifically is kind of neglected um, in health education there. Um, so those would be the topics that we would be presenting in that station. Uh, and then pharmacy. So while um, the adults are at the Charla, um, we will be collecting their um, medications that the doctors in consult prescribed. And then after their Charla, they'll come and um, pick up their prescriptions, the medications. Um, and in the station, you get to work alongside a pharmacist, which is pretty cool as well. Here's a sample itinerary of what it'll look like. 
Um, day one and day seven are mostly just for travel. Uh, day two is going to be kind of preparation for the medical clinic. Um, that's kind of going to look like uh, taking inventory of all the medications and working with the pharmacist, um, amongst other things. And then after lunch, it'll be pre uh, preparation for the adult charla and working on our Spanish because we're going to be presenting um, the next day at the clinic. Uh, day three, four, and five will be spent at the clinic um, cycling through the stations. Day six is going to be, again, kind of inventory with medications and stuff like that. Um, and then DI, which is just where we input all the information that the, the doctors have filled out um, into Global Brigades' medical information uh, online system. Uh, and then the volunteer donation goal for the trip. Um, this is what it's set up this year. Um, yeah, it's going to be in Honduras over reading break. Um, and there's also a really good link to a video. Uh, kind of gives you a good, good context of um, the healthcare system um, and stuff going on in Honduras. I would highly recommend watching it. Um, yeah, and now I think it's Ange. Hi, everybody. So I'll be talking a bit about the engineering brigade and what it's like volunteering in person there. So what is Global Engineering Brigade? Um, what you get to gain from this experience is you'll get to learn and understand the diverse challenges of designing water systems in rural communities and the fundamentals of surveying, hydrology, and hydrology. It's a good volunteering experience and it's like a good experience overall. So this is our itinerary for the seven day brigade usually. So I'll just be going through each one for the slides here. So on the first day is um, just traveling, same with medical and business and all those. And then afterwards on day two is the technical evaluation and site visit. This is where you get to go on those long hikes um, and <laughs> visit all the water systems in the community and get to know your community members and just about the community a little bit more. And then after that, we map survey, um, map and survey the community. This usually takes a couple of days depending on the community and how many members, I mean, how big the community is and how many members join the brigade and just how fast we all work as a team together. But yeah, and then after that, we have our system design presentation. Um, here we'll be presenting in Spanish about um, the business ownership part of how much um, how much it like cost for the community and how much we impact and how much they can help and how much the government helps and just about the water system in general to the community members. And then um, on one of the last days, we go on a water system follow-up from one of the past communities that we've done an engineering brigade and a water brigade on, and we just make sure that they're still doing good or like if they need any help with anything and stuff like that. So this is the donation goal for this year. And there's also another link for a video as well. Okay, so then I'm going to be volunteering on a business brigade. Um, as of last night, we have a new business chapter president, Liam. Um, I'm going to be presenting for today, but <laughs> moving forward, he's going to be kind of the go-to um, pretty soon here. Um, and because we were a little bit late to start, we're thinking about shooting for like a May or summer brigade for business. So this would be a good opportunity if anybody wanted to try two brigades, you could do the February and the summer, or if um, February doesn't work out for you, for whatever reason, there is the opportunity, hopefully. We haven't solidified dates or anything yet, but that's what we're gonna shoot for. Um, kind of the two main goals of the business brigades is to strengthen community owned banks or kind of get them started if they don't have them already. Um, and also to kind of provide guidance to small businesses and try and make sure that they have the tools and resources to be able to thrive um, on their own. Part of the donation goal is called a for these ongoing projects um, through capitalizing the bank and then as well monitoring and evaluation. 
Um, same goes for both the businesses that we're partnering with, monitoring how they do over time, as well as the banks. We provide training as well as follow up. Here is a business sample itinerary. I'll also mention this package that I got the information from was from Panama. Um, they're hoping to start in-person brigades in Honduras again this February, but um, at the moment they're just doing Panama um, and Greece, I think. But on the first day is kind of going to be a bit of a big introduction to the community bank situation, as well as the small business that you're gonna be partnering with. Um, sorry, that's day two. The first day is kind of settling in as with the other brigades. Um, day three and day four is going to be a lot of research. Day five, we have both a children's educational workshop and then also a microfinance and microenterprise workshop for the businesses. Um, on day six, you get to do your business plan presentation in Spanish and then meet with the community bank and farewell. Here's the volunteer donation goal. Again, this is for Panama. I can't imagine it's gonna be super different in Honduras if that's where we end up going. Um, but the quote is for 11.50, where and when, like I said, is to be announced still. Um, and like the other chapters, the airfare and COVID um, insurance are not included in this cost here. Okay, and then in terms of brigade logistics, this is going to be mostly centered around the upcoming brigades in February, just because they're coming up a little bit sooner. Um, but this would be the timeline and sort of overall cost for these ones. The first deadline's coming up in about two weeks. It's on November 12th. And this is for a $155 deposit and also to sign up on Empowered. Empowered is sort of where Global Brigades collects all of the donations. So that's where all of your payments will be made. You can pay directly to GB through e, or to UVIC GB through e-transfer, and then we can upload it for you. Um, just know that if you upload it yourself, there's going to be a service charge. I'm going to talk a little bit more about specifics later, um, but it'll like be less than a dollar difference depending on which which way you do it for this first one. Um, December first is going to be the last day to back out, so that 155 deposit is going to be refundable only until December first. After that, you won't be able to get any of your money back. Um, December 3rd, which is just a few days after, we're going to be paying the next payment, which is for the travel. Um, and then the roster is just another piece on Empowered. It's sort of like just a big questionnaire about yourself. Um, it's going to ask probably for your vaccination status, um, because as it was shown earlier, we do have to be fully vaccinated to travel on Brigade. Um, yeah, just a bunch of questions. And then the last deadline would be January 17th. That is for the final donation goal, which is those big numbers you saw earlier. The 155 deposit will be subtracted from this, so that's not anything extra. Um, and then plus the COVID insurance, which we discovered for Honduras was $163. So in total, depending on your brigade type and fundraising efforts, we saw that the medical brigade was the most expensive. Um, I think with all of these costs, it, like if you do no fundraising, it's gonna be about 1500. Um, and then if you have engineering or business, which were a little bit cheaper and you get the gold level, we can maybe go as low as 900. It also depends on how much our fundraisers make throughout the year. Um, Telebrigade scholarship. Anybody who participated in one of our Telebrigades earlier this year will receive $100 off of their donation goal for up to a year afterwards. So it would only be for this year's brigades. Um, that's just a cool thing I thought I'd throw out. You don't really have to do anything. I found out that I have everybody's completion certificates, so I can go ahead and submit those for anybody that signed up. Um, and then some more little miscellaneous travel logistical things. Um, we usually do a travel vaccine clinic here at UVic, so we're going to reach out to the travel clinic in Victoria. They came here last time and they kind of got us set up, told us what vaccines we needed. Um, and got that all sorted out here, which was great. Um, we also have to keep in mind the international travel requirements at the time. Um, we're gonna have to do the molecular COVID testing, which is a little bit expensive as well. I'll have to double check this, but I think we just have to pay on our way out to get it done here. When we're coming back, we'll get a test in Honduras. They're pretty cheap there, but I think that's included in our COVID-19 insurance donation goal. Um, and then I think it just has to be within 72 hours of arriving back home. So I think we should be good on that. But again, more details to come and I will double check all of my facts there as things get closer. 
some frequently asked questions I thought I would throw in. Um, the trip is non-refundable in the case off chance if somebody like gets COVID right before we leave or if for whatever reason we can't run the brigade. Um, the money uploaded on Empowered is non-refundable, but it can be applied to a future brigade or telebrigade. Um, so if for whatever reason you think doesn't run, but everything is fine in the world, COVID is fine and you still wanna go, you can join on another school. Um, there are other schools that run a lot of brigades throughout the summer and May if you wanted to wait until after exams, um, but then you wouldn't be able to go with people you know. So that's kind of the trade-off there. Um, Again, if you can't go in February, you can join another school. And now we're going to be having the business brigade running later in the year. So that's another option. A lot of people worry about the safety of Honduras. Um, I feel super safe when I'm on brigade. We have 24 seven. We're accompanied by like military and police staff that are local there. Um, the compound that we stay at is specifically for GB and it's like totally just in the middle of nowhere. We're pretty isolated away from the big cities, so there's not really big crimes where we go. Um, and then also from the airport, we get picked up by private GB transportation. This is all included in our donation goals as well. And then um, we also have to be automatically enrolled in travel insurance and COVID-19 insurance. Okay, and then because some of this stuff is a little bit difficult to put on Instagram, we're going to be getting our Facebook group back up and running so there's the link there we'll be sending it out as well with the meeting slides um you will have to request to join because it's a private group but we'll accept you um, and then that's where i'll post all the details about deadlines coming up i also i'll probably go over this at the next meeting as well but last year i posted a big tutorial on how to sign up for empowered it's pretty straightforward but it just kind of goes step by step on what you need to click um, and then i'll also just attach the link so that it's pretty easy okay Fundraisers. This talked a lot faster than I thought it was going to. <laughs> we can do it for time. Okay, so a few fundraisers that we have coming up. Uh, I think the most or the earliest one will be our pumpkin carving contest. Um, so to enter that, it's super easy. If you're going to be carving a pumpkin, all you have to do is take a picture of it and tag GB either on Instagram or Facebook, or if you don't wanna do that, you can also just send it to the UVic GB email. Um, to enter, you do have to pay a $5 entry fee. Um, but if you're also looking to get some points for um, up the brigades, you can entering, you'll get some points as well as just sharing the contest on social media. So either Facebook and or Instagram. Um, and that goes for any of the fundraisers. Uh, the one after the pumpkin carving contest would be our bottle drive. So not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Um, so start collecting those bottles and cans if you can. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have a volunteer sign up sheet for that. And once again, you can uh, get points for that um, by either bringing bags or volunteering to help sort bottles. And this can all be all the point breakdowns can be found on the website. Um, and then last we have is a logo design contest. So we're looking at ordering um, some, I guess, merch, apparel. <laughs> and so we're looking to see if anyone wants to try and design something for, I guess it could be specific to a brigade, but probably better just general global brigades logo. Um, so everyone can wear it. Um, yeah. And that one's going to most likely, or the submission for a logo will be due before reading break, which I believe is November 11th or 10th. Um, yeah, but there'll be more info on the logo design contest coming. So. And the last one in the corner is a volunteer event with the Mustard Seed uh, nonprofit group. They put on a Christmas dinner every year. This year it is on November 21st, which is a Sunday. And the sign up sheet for it is coming soon on uh, link tree on Instagram and over email. And there's slots of volunteer all the way from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So anytime you can get this much appreciated. Does anyone have any questions? That was a lot of information that we just threw at you. 